الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continuing with our discussion and our lesson where we are studying verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this blessed month of Ramadan as we know which is the month of the Quran and it's important brothers and sisters that we all improve our relationship with the book of Allah azza wa jal in this blessed month because as the Prophet وسلم, mentioned هم أهل القرآن أهل الله وخاصته the people of the Quran they are the chosen servants of Allah and they are the closest to him هم أهل القرآن أهل الله وخاصته it's not about likes it's not about being an influence on Instagram it's about being from the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected and the people that are closest to Allah azza wa These are the people that by the will of Allah azza wa jal will be able to influence others and make real change. Not just change on social media for a video or a picture. Because change that will last and benefit the people will be brought about by those who try and be righteous and pious, you find them in the masajid, you find them, alhamdulillah, building communities, you find them in positive things, not just when there's an opportunity for a selfie. Other than that, هذا لا ينفع ولا يغني من جوع. And today, we were going to discuss a topic that we have deliberately delayed until tomorrow, Inshallah ta'ala, we will discuss that tomorrow. But today, after some of the events that have transpired here in Philadelphia this morning, early in the morning, a 15-year-old boy was killed walking to school. And sadly, many of us are desensitized to these type of incidents and occurrences. This is not normal. This is something that is normally connected and associated to a war zone. This is something that causes trauma and something that will detrimentally affect everyone. Not just those who are harmed directly by the violence. So today, alhamdulillah, for this lesson we will discuss a verse in the Quran that deals with this topic of murder and killing because naam, the killing has to stop and likewise this wave of senseless violence and how do we stop it us as muslims every muslim who believes in allah azawajal in the last day knows that they have to change themselves first and by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal, they will see change in themselves and then they can try and change those who are around them and then those who are in their vicinity and the like. In Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru ma bi anfusim. Allah Azza wa Jal will never change the state of a people until they change the state of themselves. Naam. And that change again, no akid, we emphasize, it will be brought about by the people that Allah has chosen and selected. Naam, those people that try and be upright and examples in the correct way, the way that Allah legislated. And the verse that we will discuss today is Surah Al Ma'idah. Surah Al Ma'idah, verse number 32. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, 
من أجل ذلك كتبنا على بني إسرائيل أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا ولقد جاءتهم رسلنا بالبينات ثم إن كثيرا منهم بعد ذلك في الأرض لمسرفون الله سيد عز وجل سورة المائدة verse number 32 that for this reason we ordain for the children of Israel that whoever takes a life unlawfully unless it is a punishment for murder or someone spreading corruption in the earth whoever takes a life unlawfully it is as if they have killed the whole of humanity the whole of mankind and whoever saves a life then it would be as if they have saved the whole of mankind indeed our messengers have come to you with clear proofs and evidences and then many of them then many of them after this transgress in the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned this verse after telling us about the story of the two sons of Adam one of them killing the other ظُلْمًا وَعُدْوَانًا وَحَسَدًا out of oppression, transgression, and jealousy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned after that story, this ayah. مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أَنَّهُ مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا For this reason And again this is after the story of the two sons of Adam one of them killing the other which son killed which son? Who killed who? Tafadhal Yes Yes which son killed whom? Mother and the Dawood in Arabic, do you know the, the names? Qabil killed Habil. Cain killed Abel. Naam. And brothers and sisters, murder in Al-Islam. Naam, murder. Murder in Al-Islam. After shirk, according to many of the scholars of Islam, and Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said, عند أصحابنا, with our companions, he said the most serious of major sins after shirk is al-qatl, is murder. قال أصحابنا أكبر الكبائر بعد الشرك القتل. Look, subhanallah, the understanding of Ahl al-Islam. Al-Imam al-Hafidh al-Nawi, al-Hafidh al-Nawi, he said, قال أصحابنا our companions stated that after shirk the most serious sin the most major sin is murder he said كذا نص الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى and this was stated by الشافعي في كتاب الشهادات في مختصر المزني and brothers and sisters the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed us of a time like this Subhanallah, and what we are experiencing today, what we are seeing around us, this alarming level and rate of murder, it didn't happen overnight. It was a consequence of various things. Indecency, immorality, the collapse of the family structure, the music culture, this drug culture, and other than that. That is why there's no such thing as being a rapper and then coming out to the people and saying, you know, stop the violence. When you're rapping about 
intoxicants and taking drugs and murder and other than that. That's a joke. And that is why when we see some of our brothers from the Muslims who are rappers, just get it together. But anyone who is out there rapping about killing and drugs and indecency and disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal should not be talking about no da'wah. They need to give da'wah to their own soul before anything else. But that's social media, that's Instagram. That is why we don't see any change. Because lasting change, it comes from the sincere. Those who follow the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, and Subhanallah, killing has reached such a level that we find children killing parents in the news. Last year there were stories children killing their own parents because the parent won't buy them a game for the PlayStation or the Xbox. Stories of parents killing their own children. Yesterday there was a killing in a school and today in Philadelphia we had an incident where a 15-year-old boy was killed walking to school. We know, Ikhwan, we do not believe that demonstration is a way to bring about rectification, that's clear. But where are the people in arms demonstrating now? And again, this is not a correct way. But when we had the incident in Minnesota, when it was political, look at the, the actions of the people after that. Children being killed. In our neighborhoods, some of the children are our family members. And no one's saying anything because it's not political. Again, that's how desensitized we have become. The Prophet Sallallahu he said, Walladi nafsi biyadi. I swear by him in whose hand is my soul. La tadhabu dunya he said, this world will not come to an end. This world, it will not come to an end until a day comes. What is that day? He said, la yadril qatil fi ma qatala this world will not end until a day comes where the killer does not know why they have killed. Nor the one who has been murdered, they do not know why they have been murdered. That's like today. We have children killing, and if you were to sit with them and try and get to the bottom of it, there's not even a reason for it. It started over a comment or a look, or it started, and many of them were friends. Many of them are from the same area. And that is why in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described murder as being what? Hadha min amal shaitan. This is from the acts, of, this is from the act of the devil. He described murder as being from the work of the devil. Hadha min amal shaitan. Because it's the devil. Look, it starts off a particular area of the city they're together against another area of the city then shaitan divides even that area into streets and then those streets will divide further and it keeps dividing until everyone is killing everyone but we don't know why we're killing everyone you're killing your friends your brothers the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he was asked Qila, how's this how could this occur where a person kills someone and he doesn't know why he's killed them. Or the one who is being killed don't know why they are being killed. He said Al-Harj because there will be massacre and prevalent killing like the time that we're living now. Massacres, killings all around us. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Qatil Wal-Maqtul Finnaar The killer and the killed, they're both in the hellfire. The murderer and the one who has been murdered, they're in the fire. Somebody might, might say, why the one who has been killed? Now, that's when the one who has been killed had the intention to kill and murder the one who was trying to kill him. Not the innocent bystander. Because there comes in another hadith 
The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا الْتَقَ الْمُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولِ فِي النَّارِ He said, if two Muslims, they fight against one another with their swords, the killer and the killer in the hellfire. So they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, هذا القاتل, we understand the killer is in the hellfire. فَمَا بَالِ الْمَقْتُولِ Why the one who was killed, the one who was being murdered, how is he in the fire? He said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ حَرِيصًا عَلَى قَتْلِ صَاحِبِهِ Because he had the intention to kill his companion. That's in that scenario. That is in that scenario. Murder, brothers and sisters, look. Naam, the Prophet وسلم, hadith Anas. The Prophet was asked about the most serious and severe major sins. He said, shirku billah wal qatil. He said, shirk, associating partners with Allah, that's the most severe and serious and the greatest of sins. And then he said, murder. And he mentioned from as-sab' al-mubiqat, the seven destructive sins, taking the life of the person unlawfully. That is why the Muslim that fears Allah Azza wa Jal, that is why the children, if some of them are Muslims who are involved in this, part of this, what is taking place, they have not been nurtured and raised and educated correctly. Because if someone is nurtured and raised and educated from a young age, about the gravity of killing and how serious killing is a murder and how great a sin it is in Islam and the punishment in this world and the punishment in the Akhirah then they would conduct themselves in an appropriate fashion that is why, again, one of the measures to prevent this madness is to make sure our children are at the masjid, being educated, learning the Qur'an, praying in the masajid, imitating the righteous, not trying to be the next drill rapper, not involved in any of that. And Allah Azza wa said in this verse, مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ أنه من قتل نفسا بغير نفس أو فساد في الأرض فكأنما قتل الناس جميعا. For this reason, we have ordained. For this reason, we have ordained upon the children of Israel that whoever takes a life, unless it is a punishment for murder or spreading corruption in the earth then it is as if they have killed the whole of mankind, the whole of humanity. Why is that? Al-Imam Al-Sa'di explains, and I'll read it here. فَلَمَّا تَجَرَّ عَلَى قَتْلِ النَّفْسِ الَّتِي لَمْ تَسْتَحِقَ الْقَتْلِ عُلِمَ أَنَّهُ لَا فَرْقَ عِنْدَهُ بَيْنَ هَذَا الْمَقْتُولِ وَبَيْنَ غَيْرِهِ When a person is brazen and bold to kill and take a life, that is not deserving of that. It is known that there is no difference to this person, this type of person. There is no difference to him, this murderer, between the one who he killed and anyone else. If he kills one person, he's going to, he can kill again. He said, this person, it depends upon his, what his evil soul incites him to. And that's what we're seeing now. That is what we are seeing now. As Sa'di he said, this type of person will, have, will be bold and brazen and reckless to kill the whole of mankind. Yes, because there's no difference to him between the person that he killed and anyone else. Likewise, وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ أَحْيَا نَفْسًا أَيْ إِسْتَبْقَ أَحَدًا فَلَمْ يَقْتُلُهُ مَعَ دُعَاءِ نَفْسِهِ لَهُ إِلَى قَتْلِ فَمَنَعَهُ خَوْفَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ مِنْ قَتْلِهِ كأنه أحيا الناس جميعا لأن ما معه من الخوف يمنعه من قتل من لا يستحق القتل. سعدي said yes and as Allah mentioned ومن أحياها whoever saves a life meaning what he refrained from taking the life of someone even though his soul was inciting him towards that. 
but due to his fear of Allah Azza wa Jal his fear of Allah prevented him from taking the life of the one that did not deserve to die then this is as if they saved the whole of mankind because this fear of Allah Azza wa Jal will prevent them from killing people that should not be killed or transgressed against Nam, they have the hope of Allah. Where is this hope of Allah going to be developed? Nam, because if someone has this Iman, you say to them, fear Allah. You remind them about the punishment of Allah. You remind them about how severe this thing is. Inshallah, they will refrain. And remember, if there's no fear of Allah, look, that's what the behavior that we see taking place in the streets today. Young people raising young people. Chaos and madness. And again, all of us have an interest in what is taking place. Why? Because many of us have children. Many of us have children. And even those who do not have children have families. And even those who do not have families, Nam should want good for society. Because when we see that children 15 years of age and younger are being killed going to school, this should not sit right with any of us. And some people, Habibullah, they have a defeatist mentality. They say, you know, these children, they're not going to listen. Some people, they say, these children, they are not going to listen. How do you know? Allah, guys, not us, not me, not you. Perhaps that word that you shared with that person because you are aware of it. Because sadly, one of the problems that we have in this city, you have many people, they got one foot in, one foot out. They're pretending that they're against it, but in, rea in reality, some of them are instigating and enjoying it from the sidelines. And that is why I've said on numerous occasions, the only people that can stop this are those who have no stake in it. They're not into any drugs, they're not into no, no streets, they have nothing to do with it, and they're the people in the Masajid of Allah Azza wa Jal, and they are Al Mu'minun, as we mentioned at the beginning. They are the people of the Quran, Ahlullah wa Khasatu, the chosen servants of Allah and those who are closest to Allah. Why? Because they only want good for the people. They don't have one foot in, one foot out. They're not, you know, selling drugs and then coming on television and saying this violence is terrible and they're the drug dealer. Or they're the ones instigating. So many of us, we know people. You never know that one word. No, you need to fear Allah. You need to get it together. You're ruining people's lives. You, you're going to end up dead or in prison. That one word may prevent something. You don't know. You don't know the, str the strength of a word if Allah blesses it. Likewise, even if it doesn't stop it, it may limit it. And even if it doesn't limit it, you fulfill the duty that Allah placed upon you. Now, and if all of us had this mentality, Ikhwan, and again, you can't wait. If people are waiting for just the police, the police were there on Germantown Avenue when the various killings took place. Same issue is that the police are right there in front of what's taking place. That's not going to change anything. And again, we said the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they changed the earth. And it's crazy that some people, they're so reckless with their life, they're willing to throw away their life for drugs. They're willing to throw away their life for their reputation. They're willing to throw away their life for a gang. But when it comes to, for the sake of Allah, what you don't have the courage to make a change, to stand and say, listen, you can't be on this corner. I'm, listen, I'm not going to allow this to happen. Now, if a person is harmed in that way, and they are killed, for example, someone says, listen, I'm not going to allow anyone to do any, anything to this child and that person and they're defending the child, narju, that that person may be a shaheed, by the way, inshallah, a martyr. Life is precious. And that's what we need to teach the young people and we need to remind ourselves and likewise the adults, we need to be an example for the youngsters and when we have issues, we should know how to de-escalate them and resolve them. Not that we're ready to fight and not that we're ready to create commotion. 
Because again, what we are seeing now with the young people, it didn't happen overnight. It's a result from the behavior of some of us. It's the result of the behavior of some of us. The lack of respect. The failure to take care of our responsibilities. Parents. Mothers and fathers. The collapse of the family. Glorifying this drill and rap culture. Many of us have a role to play in it. And until we recognize that and change this culture, nothing's going to change. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for success. And look, brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us at the end of the ayah, He said, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ At the end of the verse, He said, وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْهُمْ رُسُولُنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ And our messengers came to them with clear proofs. The proof once the proof has, has reached you, you don't have an excuse. Once the proof has reached you, you don't have any excuse before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah tells us the problem. However, many of them after that. Many of them, they transgress in the earth. And brothers and sisters, in the next ayah, which we don't have time to explain, Allah Azza wa Jalla mentions the punishment for those who want to turn a blind eye and turn away from the reminder that came to them, and they want to go around killing people. If they were in Muslim countries, Allah Azza wa Jalla informs us how they would be dealt with, and that's why there needs to be penalties and there needs to be, yani, there needs to be punishments that are proportionate to the crime. And that's why some of these people, it's insanity. Even the, the mentality of many of the people, um, we're, look, and again, this is something that we're not involved in because it's not going to change our society. But some people say, oh, we, we're going to vote this person in, you know, into, into office. And they're voting people in because they're, they're, they're soft on crime. So you voted and elected this person into office because he's soft on crime. And now you're crying because people are getting killed. That's what you chose. You chose this with your own hands. And then people are on TV crying, wondering, why are we in this state? You voted for him because he's soft on crime. So now when people are getting killed and robbed and carjacked, are you still talking about defund the police? When someone comes into your house and tries to kill you or tries to steal your belongings, are you going to be talking about defund the police? And being soft on crime? That is why, brothers and sisters, this is the solution. Again, it's based upon revelation and it goes in accordance to logic. It's common sense. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change the state of our communities. And may Allah protect us from any evil.